Hey, what's cracking? So, me again. Video number three. I want you to know that these videos are hard for me. It's hard for me to talk about it. It's hard for me to go back through it. I did not come out unscathed. Um, I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder. It's like a man who's been at war. It's the reason when you go to war, you're there for a certain length of time. It serves as duty because when you're there too long, when you're in the battlefield too long, it breaks things that can never again be fixed. I know that going to prison is not going to war. I would have liked to have been a soldier, died a hero instead of a convict. Believe that. I wish my life had gone a lot differently, but it didn't, and that's why I'm here telling you these stories. So, uh, some of these stories I'm going to laugh about as I talk about them. It's funny looking back on it, but you can believe it was not funny at the time. So, uh, the first thing that happened after I was arrested, I was taken to the Berry House in Oklahoma City. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with the Berry House, it's a place where they hold juveniles like they would adults who have went to the county jail, but they're under 18, have not been certified as an adult. Someone they steal a car, kill someone, whatever the crime may be, they go to the Berry House if they are in that county. So I was put in the Berry House, and the first night my mother was trying to get there to see me. It was the first of March, and... March 4th was the day to be exact. And my mother was trying to get there to see me. And like we lived quite a ways away from this city. And there had been an ice storm. And the roads were terrible. She did everything she could to get there in time for the visit. And she showed up like 30 minutes too late. And they must have thought she was crazy. Because she was out in the parking lot. And she realized she wasn't going to see me. She was just fell to her knees and started screaming like a crazy woman. So they come out and checked on her and realized what the thing was, and they brought her in and let her have a few minutes. Thank God, and I'm very thankful to those people to this day that they let my mother have a few minutes to calm her mind. My mind was still racing like a rat in a trap because, like I said, I'd never been anywhere but the principal's office, and wow, to be taken away from home by the police and questioned and then put in this place where away from home was just... When they stuck me in that cell and I looked through the windows and seen all the other kids looking out their windows, it freaked me out, man. And I did not have any idea what to do. Um, if any of you are claustrophobic, you can imagine what it's like to be stuck inside four concrete walls and know that you cannot escape. You cannot get out, no matter how bad you want to. No matter what's going on on the outside with your family, you cannot leave. And um, it's hard to come to that in your mind get a grip on that but they let me see my mother for a few minutes and then they took me to my cell well in the Berry house um, you're in a single cell there are boys and girls there um, they have school um, in the morning they get you up they take you to breakfast after breakfast they take you to school um, then you have lunch and you have a exercise time they have basketball court and things outside then you go outside and exercise um, after school, you uh, lounge around the day room. We can watch videos, watch movies. They play movies for us. We play chess. We play card games. But the thing is, I was the only white kid in my day room. Let me say, first of all, I am not racist. Okay? I don't care if you're green. Only thing I care about is that you do what you tell me you'll do. If you give me your word, you keep it. Because if I give you my word... You can bet your life I'll keep it or else I'm dead and could not do that. When you're locked up in prison or anywhere, your word is all that you have. I can be locked away in a cell with no way of getting out of that cell, no way of doing anything, and I'm butt naked. But if I tell you through that wall, if you'll do something for me, I'll do this for you when I get out. You can bet your life I'm going to do that because the man's word is all he's got. And when you're in prison, that is how you're weighed by your word. If you do what you say you will do. Okay, so uh, when I first get in there, I guess I was scared to come out of my room or I was still in shock from the murder, but I, I stayed in my cell for three days. I wouldn't come out. And so it is all goes by a level system. If you go to school and you stay out of trouble and you don't disrespect the staff, you work your way up to what is a level four where at night you get to stay out an extra hour. 
They take you down to a classroom at school. You get a, you earn Barry House bucks by going to school. It's like having money, it's like Monopoly money, but you trade it for chips and candy bars and a pop, a treat at night during the extra hour you get to stay out. It's an incentive to keep kids out of trouble, to keep them from fighting, to get them to go to school and try to learn and straighten themselves out. Each night, Monday through Friday, I believe it is, you can visit your family for a couple hours. Barry House is your chance to realize you've messed up, to stay out of trouble, to straighten up your life before it's too late. During that time, the Barry House, I will say, for the most part, was as rough as most prisons I've ever been in. Um, I'm not racist. Anyone who knows me will tell you I'm not racist. I, I never joined the Brotherhood, although I did have a chance. I had a chance to be a Crip, a Blood, uh, in the Indian Brotherhood. Hope no one takes offense to that. I never mean any disrespect to any of you guys, but I have had friends in all of them that I did a lot of time with that have tried to get me to join it. Never joined anything. I almost joined up once in uh, Granite, but the first time I was there, but my mother told me that I have brothers who waited on the day that I got out, real brothers, and that blood brothers, and that uh, even though I thought there would be no life after this, one day there would. And so... She asked me, and so I did it. I didn't join. I always stood on my own. Um, I never allowed anything I was in to become racial. Never want to ask, ask anyone to help me fight. I have asked people to help keep it fair. Give me a one-on-one. -on -one. That's all I ever asked. Give me a one-on-one. -on -one. Let me see it coming. That's all I ask. So I say that I'm not racist first to tell you this. In the Berry House, is very hard for a little white boy. Okay, because... They were beginning to have Crips and Bloods in the Oklahoma area. And they were out to prove they were for real. And the day room would have about 20 kids in it. There were three day rooms. My fall partner was white. He was in the day room next to me. The 16-year-old was automatically certified as an adult. At the time my crime was committed, you had to be at least 16 in the state of Oklahoma during the, when the crime was committed to immediately be certified as an adult. If you were 15 or younger, you had to first be certified. So myself and the 14-year-old went to the Berry House. The 16-year-old went to the county jail. From the time we were in the county jail, they had me in one day room, Kenneth in the other, and everyone else was black, and they beat the shit out of us. Uh, there's no other way to put that. I've never had anyone kick my ass in one-on-one -on -one fight, though I've had a few that were, I was glad I got broken up. But I have had my ass tore up by several. I was stabbed with a pencil. Uh, you go in the shower. You go in the shower in groups of six. And there is a pole in the middle. And it has six pickets that go around it in a circle. Everyone shares shampoo. Everyone shares conditioner. And there are huge family size bars of soap. Uh, I tried to not get in with a certain group of guys who had kept kicking my ass. <laughs> Uh, Ted, Roger, there are like five or six of these guys. So every time they would catch me with no staff around, it was on, man. I couldn't get a one on one. They would beat the shit out of me. We'd get locked down for a few days, lock you down for a day, sometimes two, sometimes three. If it was serious, we'd get back out in the same day room with the same people. And you just lose your level. But if you don't care about the candy bar and the pop, it don't matter. You lose one hour in the day room, that's it. So, uh, one night we went to take a shower and I tried to avoid getting in with these guys, I'll be honest with you. I like to consider myself brave. I, I've never ran from anything. In prison, they catch out. Somebody goes to the police and they ask for protection. They tell them they're scared. Someone threatened them. They're afraid. They owe money, whatever the case may be. They need to be protected and they go to protective custody or PC for short. And uh, no matter what, there's one thing I decided when I went to prison, there are two things. Number one, never tell on anyone. Never going to be a rat. Never going to ask the police to help me, no matter what. Win, lose, or draw. Number two, I'm not gay. I will not be your girl. We will not be having sex with another man. Period. I don't have anything against homosexuals. If there's any chance of me ever being one, and they try to make me be one, they killed it all that so where most of my problems came from in prison was 
over people wanting me to be gay, assuming I was gay, uh, making rumors that I was gay. That was to begin with. That's where all the first fights started. But after that, I got myself in trouble trying to deal drugs everywhere I went. And we're going to get to that later. But as for the Berry House, that night I got trapped getting in the shower with these guys. And you can roll your towel up a certain way. Those of you know, it's called a rat tail. And you can pop someone with it just like a whip. And um, they waited until I was in the shower. And I tried my best to hurry. But they rolled up these rat tails. And they come around the corner. And they were about to wear me out with those rat tails. And um, the door was locked. There was no staff. So all I could do is I started grabbing these family bars of soap. Throwing them at them. And those suckers are big. And they hurt. So I was able to keep them around the corner where they weren't able to hit me with the rat tails until the staff heard the commotion and opened the door, thank God. But they beat the crap out of me several times. Finally, Ted, Ted was the, run, the guy leading the whole thing. And finally, we were all locked in our cell for 72 hours. We let Ted out first. They have this plastic furniture in the day room where you kind of recline in it and just your head and shoulders sticking up above it. So... They let Ted out first. My door was behind his. And I stepped out. I walked up behind him and tried to kick his head off his shoulder. And immediately, staff had me on, was choking me out. Back in lock up for 72 more hours. So then they put a white kid in our day room. And a guy that was 17, I was only 15. He was a lot bigger than me. So he was trying to fit in with Ted and uh, Roger. And they told him to sucker punch him. So. They had me talking to him, and he walks up behind me and hits me from behind in the ear and busted my eardrum immediately. I heard nothing but ring, and he knocked, knocked me on a table. If I hadn't been, the table hadn't been there, he knocked me down. And uh, he went to flailing on me, and I got loose. And in the very house, they go, and they write down every day how you act, your behavior, and it's used against you in court in your certification hearing. So I was doing my best to never be the one to start a fight or say anything like, I'll kill you, or any, just the last thing you want to say when you're with murder, I'll kill you. I couldn't help it. I started screaming I would kill him, the uh, white guy that sucker punched me. And they, uh, the staff picked me up, choked me, drug me outside, and, and they put me in the day room next door to my fall partners. And after that, there was two of us in there. And we ended up making a friends with Smiley and Tremaine King and a few other guys. And we never had any more problems after that. Tremaine King, if you're out there, bro, hope you're doing good. Big love for you. But I can do more push-ups than you. <laughs> so, uh, that's the very house. Next, we'll go to county jail. You guys stay safe. Peace out. See you there.